Get prepared to be shocked and frightened by the 10 creepiest items discovered in a museum, including a ruby necklace of genital warts and a collection of frozen hands. Museums serve as educational resources and occasionally house some of the most bizarre relics in existence. The Yorkshire Museum in England, which has five permanent collections, including antiquities, collectible coins, and astronomy, recently issued a call to the museums of the social media world to reveal their creepiest artifacts. The unsettling but instructive craze gained popularity soon. It turns out that there are a lot of macabre and unpleasant objects in museums around the world. The legends associated with these collectibles can occasionally be more gruesome than the actual object. Today we will discuss 10 creepiest things found in museums. At number 10, we have shrunken heads. There is the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford, England, which has devoted an entire room to shrunken heads. The Pitt Rivers Museum is a museum displaying the archaeological and anthropological collections of the University of Oxford in England. The museum is located to the east of the Oxford University Museum of Natural History and can only be accessed through that building. The museum was founded in 1884 by Augustus Rivers, who donated his private collection to the University of Oxford, which has the condition that a permanent lecturer in anthropology must be appointed museum staff are involved in teaching archaeology and anthropology at the university. Even today, the first curator of the museum was Henry Balfour. At number 9, we have bugs and parasites. There is the Mijiro Parasitology School Museum in Tokyo, Japan, where free-to-read microscopic bugs and parasites are on display. It is a small medical museum in the Maguire Ward in central Tokyo, Japan. The museum is devoted to parasites and the science of parasitology and is founded in 1953 by doctors at Oral Comic E. The research library contains 60,000 parasites, specimens, as well as 15,000 papers and 5,000 books on parasitology. The museum has a gift console on the second floor where visitors can purchase a museum, guidebook, postcards, t-shirts, or mobile foam straps with actual parasites embedded in acrylic. The museum is free to visitors and relies on donations because it is preserved and unfortunately does not receive government funds. At number 8, we have Albert Einstein's famous brain. One of the most famous collectors of strange artifacts in America is no doubt the Mutter Museum of the College of Physicians in Philadelphia, founded by American surgeon Thomas Mutter. In 1863, the museum is host to an array of medical specimens that originally included the most puzzling anomalies handled by Mutter and his colleagues. Today, the museum houses over 25,000 specimens including pieces of Albert Einstein's famous brain and a replica of a woman whose head grew a horn. Unfortunately, the Mutter Museum did not participate in the viral competition. When asked by eager followers about what they would enter into their contest, the museum graciously declined to join in the wacky festivities. At number 7, we have haunted artifacts. The workers at the Prince Edward Island Museum are acutely aware of a nearly 200-year-old willed sheet toy that appears to move on its own accord over artifacts were made with the dark arts in mind, like a 200-year-old book bound in the back skin of an English murderer. Indeed, as it turns out, binding books in the skin of criminals was a somewhat common practice among the superstitious. In 19th century England, these books found in man-made level were considered eerie talisman exercises in vengeance. Not all the collectibles, however, have interesting backstories. Others appear creepy due to age or just poor stylistic choices, like the ceramic doll with a feline head and human hands on display. At number six, we have severed hands, heads while man-made artifacts can cause a stir. No doubt the objects made of men are the most unsettling featured in these museums. One such object rests in the Ripley's Believe It, or not museum in Wisconsin. The severed head of a Peter Kurt in a 1930s German serial killer known as the Vampire of Dusseldorf, also called the King of Sexual Perverts. 
Curtin killed indiscriminately and even engaged in cannibalism. He was arrested five different times before he was finally caught and put on trial. Curtin confessed to committing up to 68 crimes, including 10 murders and 31 attempted ones. He reportedly drank the blood of his victims, once drinking so much of it that he vomited. He was sentenced to the guillotine, after which his head was bisected for study and then mummified. At number 5, we have had a bucket. The Zola Museum in Amsterdam features a 19th century head bucket made out of real human tresses from its original owner's dead relatives. The Netherlands Boots of Arts Museum touched Dover Dutch Funeral Museum so far as a museum in Amsterdam, Netherlands. The museum is located in the new poster, a memorial park in Amsterdam, that includes a cemetery and Indonesia poster, a crematorium. The museum explores death and remembrance and memento mori, in addition to its collection. The museum takes over host temporary exhibitions of art and history. One of the museum's exhibitions is The Last Image, which is a digital online exhibition to which anyone can submit contents. The premise of this ongoing exhibition is to explore the implications of photography and digital space in the process of death and dying. At number four, we have necro patents at the Icelandic Museum of Sorcery. Visitors can view a pair of necro paints made out of the skin of a dead man. The pants were made as a talisman to magically summon more money, but could only be fashioned after a dying man consented to be made into them in the first place. At number three, we have genital woods. At the Mutter Museum, visitors can pursue a necklace fashioned out of genital warts. The Mutter Museum originated as a collection of specimens and medical tools used for education and medicine. Now the museum boasts a collection of over 20,000 specimens, of about which 15% are on display. This does not include the large literary collection contained within the Historical Medical Library, which is also housed in the College of Physicians of Philadelphia. At number two, we have mummified clown mummies is scary enough already. What with their penchant for getting up and walking around in search of a living victim. However, a clown mummy that actually might just be too much. The California Institute of Animal Arts a bar and concert venue that also functions as a museum of oddities. It's home to something that will make anyone with cobra phobia an irrational fear of clowns quaking their boo. And it's every bit as creepy as you might imagine. Some time ago, Siwaru acquired what he claims to be the mummified corpse of a clown known as a cow. Could you do a performer who died in 1912? A cow whose name translates to French tickler? reportedly asked before his death to be embalmed in his favorite clown costume and makeup. The body, which is still in perfect condition today, is pretty creepy, to say the least. Finally, at number one, we have Plague Mask, this authentic 16th century plague. Dr. Mask has been preserved over two years and is currently on display at the German Museum of Medical History in Ingolstadt. This was the first design of the plague doctor's mask during medieval Europe. There were two main theories of how diseases were spread and contracted to for humans very very and the miasma theory. This mask was designed to fight against miasma theory. The theory of disease believed that people got sick from bad air, and so what this mask's long nose was designed to do was to wear as would put pleasant smelling herbs and light them on fire to prevent my asthma from being inhaled by the wearer. The purpose of this mask was to keep away bats' moles known as miasma, which was thought to be the principal cause of disease before it was disproved by germ theory. Doctors believed that herbs would counter the evil smells of the plague and prevent them from being infected. That is all for today, folks. Do not forget to comment down below on what you like, and as always, we will see you in the next video.